This is the video for try now 11, where we're using the gradient function from the previous part of the question to solve a problem. Uh, right, let's read this problem really carefully because the wording is absolutely crucial. So we're told that a point Q lies on the curve. Okay, well that means that it's going to obey this equation that we had um, right at the very beginning. So it's going to obey that rule. The tangent to the curve at Q is parallel to the y-axis. So what does that mean? The tangent is parallel to the y-axis. So if I've got my axes like that, parallel to the y-axis means the tangent looks like that or something similar. So what does that mean in terms of my gradient function? Right, the only time we get a gradient like that is when we divide by zero. So that means my denominator here must be zero. So, we'll bear that in mind in a moment. This has got to equal zero. Right, given that the x-coordinate of q is negative, okay, so x is negative, we need to find the coordinates of q. Right, as I said, this has to equal zero. So that means that y has got to be equal to minus 2x, just rearranging there. Okay, so I know that the, um, my coordinate q must lie on this line somewhere. I also know that it obeys this equation. So if I substitute y equals to um, minus 2x into that equation, so solving them simultaneously, so so it's x squared plus 4xy, so 4xy plus y squared plus 27 equals 0. So I've substituted this into my equation. Let's um, simplify that. So this is going to give me a minus 8x squared. That's going to give me a plus 4x squared. So, um, collecting up the x squared, this is going to give me a minus 3x squared plus 27 equals 0. Um, right, so 3x squared has to equal 27, just taking that to the, uh, the other side. So x uh, divided by 3, so x squared is 9, so x is plus 3 or minus 3. However, we know that x is negative. So x equals minus 3, and I need the y coordinate, so if I substitute minus 3 in here, I get the y6. There we go. Solved.